Hi, I'm Peter Reinhardt, and welcome to the Johnson & Wales International Symposium on Bread. I'm coming to you from the Hans Auditorium in Charlotte, North Carolina, where we've held the last four bread symposiums. And as you can see, there's nobody here but me. And this is where we usually have it. The seats are all empty because this year, thanks to you, the symposium will be presented online virtually in our new presentation hall, which is where I will join you in just a minute. Thank you, and thanks for being part of our new virtual Johnson & Wales International Symposium on Bread, presented by Puratos. Welcome again. Throughout the entire symposium, I'll be thanking our generous sponsors over and over again, and ask that you do as well by visiting their booths and pavilions in the exhibitor hall. There you will see lots of bonus content and you can also make appointments to meet with the folks from these companies that serve our baking community so well. Our presenting sponsor is Puratos, who has partnered with us from the very beginning for all of our symposiums. And it is their support that helped us get this one of a kind gathering of thought leaders off the ground. Please also visit our fabulous flour and milling sponsors, Ardent Mills, Lindley Mills, and Central Milling. Thank you also to our equipment sponsors, the WP Bakery Group, an allied bakery and food service equipment. And thank you also to our specialty food product companies, ProBioTeam, Fire Within, Big Green Egg and Mock Mill. Please check out all of their booths to learn about their wonderful and unique products. And also thanks to our media sponsors, Cook's Country, The Local Palette, The James Beard Foundation, and The Bread Bakers Guild of America. You'll be hearing more about all of them throughout the entire series of presentations. So again, Thank you to all our sponsors. At the end of today's presentation, you will also see our credit scroll, thanking all of the people behind the scenes who made this event possible, including our production and technical partner, Ganoid Communications, our creative team at Gumbo Marketing, and the many folks at Johnson & Wales University, our hosts for this, our fourth annual gathering. So stick around if you will, but now, it's time to get things rolling with today's presentation, so let's go live. And once again, welcome to the Johnson & Wales International Symposium on Bread, presented by Puratos. Yes, and we are now officially live. We're still here, and, uh, and, and so are you. So thanks for joining us. Uh, here we are kind of uh, three quarters of the way now through the, the uh, first virtual International Symposium on Bread. Welcome back. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to our guests, Mark, uh, Claire, and Dave in a second. But first, the, the usual weekly announcements. I want to let you know what's coming up um, the rest of this week and next week. Um, on Wednesday, we'll have Patricia Kennedy and also um, Ken Weeks of the WP Bakery Group. And they're gonna be talking about, uh, again, equipment and technology of the future with a real focus on dividing and scaling equipment and uh, some of the things that, that they've been pioneering at WP. Uh, they'll be here on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we'll be having only the, uh, the webinar. We won't be having the VIP lounge because of some uh, travel problems that came up that uh, make it impossible for them to be here with us uh, live for the VIP session. So, uh, but, but they are gonna, they have the presentation already for, the, for the, uh, the main webinar part. So join us for that. And you'll again, always exploring the, uh, the, the bakery equipment of the future is kind of the thread that, that they and some of our other sponsors have been bringing to us. Um, next Monday, Terry Coletto will be here. Terry is one of the pioneers of Focaccia Gardens. And she's gonna show, she's gonna do a demo next Monday on how to create your own Focaccia Gardens whether at home or at restaurants. And then next Wednesday, Nancy Silverton will be with us and we'll be talking again, the conversation with Nancy, uh, exploring the future of bread. Beyond that, we've got uh, Tony Tipton Martin will be here in a couple of weeks 
uh, with a, an all-star panel of people talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion in the baking sector. And then we also will have a demonstration. Some of you have seen the videos that we've been posting on how to make Altamora bread and that sort of legendary bread out of uh, you know Eastern Italy. They will actually be uh, some folks here, bakers, to give us a demo on how that bread is made. So that's all coming up in the next few weeks. But uh, that's then. Uh, and until then, if you haven't yet signed up for the, uh, you know, for the for the spin, we're going to have a spin at the end of the month. A, uh, you know, uh, that, that that little wheel of fortune. And and to get to be eligible, make sure that you go to the visitor booths, all the uh, the sponsor booths, and sign the visitors guest book. And if you sign all 10 of those books, your name goes on the wheel and we'll spin and get you one of these nine inch uh, Henkel's uh, beautiful bread slicers. So that's coming up. We do that always at the last Monday of the month. So that's just a few weeks away. And that's all the preliminaries. Now let's get into the heart of what today's about. Uh, I wanna uh, welcome Mark Vetri, uh, Claire Kotnick Williams and David Joachim who are the, the creators of this Mastering Bread. Uh, one of the newest, newest entries in the bread, the bread publication world. Is, and this is really, you know, for me, anytime I see a new bread book, the first thing I, that comes to my mind is, is, is there something new that hasn't already been said about bread? And, and, and what is it? What are they doing? And, and yes, there is something new. And that's what I want to ask you guys to tell us a little bit about this book that you've done. By the way, their, their bios are all up on our homepage. So I'm not going to go into uh, telling you all about how great they are yeah. because you already know that. That's why you're here watching but um, uh, Mark, you want to just take the ball and tell us a little bit about yeah, how this sure. book came to be? Certainly. Um, well, at, first of all, thanks for, th thanks to, certainly for having us. Um, you know, uh, what a year it's been. Sorry, sorry we're not able to be there live with, with everybody, but uh, you know, I think we've all, we've all been hitting these, uh, this is this, the Zoom things, right? rather well and uh um they've been they've been actually they've been actually working out you know nicely because then we don't have to check it you know then 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 you then you know we don't actually have to fly all over the place we can just kind of hang out and uh and, and you i know. guess you're coming to us mark today from uh, from the upstairs of your restaurant the famous the upstairs of philadelphia vetri yes yes vetri, this is yeah. our this is the, the dining room where yeah and, but, and um, I know you're open tonight, so you're going to later on have to jump on we jump are. Back into the kitchen. But uh, so thank we you are, for yeah, so, out some time for us. So 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 this this last book, uh, the the, uh, the the bread book, was actually third in the 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 the, 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 the mastering series. You know, we obviously did. Uh, there you go, David. Uh, the, pass the book first. Yeah. Um, I have all three then, of them. Here. And then David. <laughs> The pizza book, of course, of course. Um, the and pizza. then we then we actually moved on to this one, um, and this was kind of a, you know, I obviously have you know sort of spent my 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 whole life you know with food food from Italy, um, and you know I'll just give you like the short story because I don't want to hog up all the all the uh, the hour here. You know, you know I had always made 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 noodles with like zero zero flour you know and and about i guess now six six years ago seven years ago um you know we we actually it's actually fitting that i am here because this was you know sort of the room that that all, that all, that that it all sort of started in you know when i i built this room um and that's actually i think right when uh, you 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 started working with us claire um, you know, we started to mess around with milling and, you know, fresh wheat and milling flour. And, uh, um, you know, we hired, we, we hired, we, we hired Claire and, um, you know, we were just like, Hey, you know, she's like, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't know, research wheat and order wheat and mill wheat and make shit, you know? And that was, and that was kind of the way, um, you know the whole thing the whole thing sort of sort of you know started off and then you know obviously um the the noodle thing happened first and i was really focusing on you know making uh my my uh my noodles with you know fresh ground wheat and um 
Um, and, you know, so we wrote obviously the, 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 the first book thinking about, you know, you know, how mo most people think of the noodle as, you know, just sort of the, the, sh the, um, the, the, the shape, right? And then the, the sauce or the ragu, that's the actual, um, the, you know, the flavor. But I was like, well, maybe the noodle that can also have some, some, some flavor in it, you know? So we started there. Um, wrote that book, you know, but yeah. all the while, you know, making, you know, finding, finding, finding different weeds all over the place, seeing what works, you know, for, for us, you know, focusing in on local wheat, obviously, um, from, from, from Castle Valley Mill, which is in the book. Um, then, then obviously, you know, my next thing, you know, was also I'm um, very much into you know make, you know the wood ovens and making some uh, the, the the pizzas. You know, yeah. you know. So we started messing around with fresh milk flour in you know in that, and then we you know. So I obviously you know you know secondly wrote the book there. Um, then the third book, you know, um, I was like. Hey Claire, you know, there's <laughs> kind of one thing left. Well, you're uh, here. Claire. There's kind of yeah. one thing left. Yeah. You're, you know, you're gonna make this book so much better than I could ever make it. Um, so was, let's write this book together. Was Claire Claire making bread for you at the restaurant at that point? The whole time, yes, yes, uh -huh. yeah. Uh huh. In addition to other things, but so she she was part of the early phase of of that. She was and, involved. The pasta I mean, as well as honestly, yeah, she was involved in all of it. You know, she, you know. Even though you know she didn't write the 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 the, the first ones, you know she was like certainly there helping and you know figuring things out and you know finding different you know wheats and all that stuff. Um, and then obviously uh, uh, Mr. Joachim over there, you know he's actually written five books with me now, and um, he knows my voice better than I know my voice at this yeah, point. Yeah. Um, you, you guys you know, have been, and, yeah. yeah, and he just was able to, um, you know, but it was certainly harder with more than one one voice, you know, and then, you know, I think, you know, he was able to really marry us, uh, you know, so everything sort of made, 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 made sense. So that's kind of the, 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 the evolution of the book. So a lot of the, in fact, a lot of the commentary in the book is, is from Claire, right? You're, you're, uh, sure. Yeah. Claire's we commentary. go back and forth. I think, you know, she'll do the head note for like one chapter. I'll do the head note for the other chapter. Um, and then, yeah. So we just kind of were sort of, um, actually a challenge in writing the book because with so yeah. many voices, you know, as a reader, you either see me and I, or you see, you know, you, there's no three, you can't refer to people like that in a book, like who's speaking. So we actually used literal signatures. We used initials so people could see when the head note was written by Claire, if it was a recipe that she'd been working on and developed or something, or if it was written by Mark. And then the rest of the book is written in the we voice. And, you know, I remember Mark, when uh, when you were sort of had made that, that move into whole grain pastas and local regionally you know, specific wheats and things like that. And you came to our campus here in, in Charlotte and did a pasta demo for our okay, students. Yeah. And you made a, I believe a, my recollection is it was 100% whole wheat pasta. You did, made it from scratch in front of everybody and then passed out samples for everybody. And it was like the lightest, airiest, sweetest pasta. That I did, I, I did. That was a long time ago. To be like that. Yeah. And, I, and I, was, I totally forgot I was there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> And it was around that same time, I think, that I met you, Claire, for the first time at, at a chef's conference, the Philly chef's conference. And, and we did, did a, like a little, I think you were part of a, a little presentation panel that we had on, on what was going on in the bread scene in Philly. Uh, yeah. And then, David, I've known you for years and years for, uh, as you've uh, written like 50 books and magazine articles and, and editor of uh, Amazing Ribs. I mean, you're, you're everywhere. So, so you're like the most prolific author I know. Uh, and then, uh, you know, watch that you guys teamed up to create the, the five books that you have, including this new one. So the, so that leads me to the question is, 
is the, the learning that you had from the pasta uh, carried over now into bread. What is it that, what's the, the sort of the specific message of this bread book that differentiates it from, you know, all the other great bread books that have been coming out during this period? It's one word, flavor. <laughs> right. It really is. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why the, all the recipes call for for bolted flour, not regular bread flour. Um, and a lot of the techniques that are discussed, uh, the challenges of dealing with that flour are for the flavor. Yeah, that's a lot. That's what it's about. Yeah, I, I mean, mean and, and I'll give. I'll, not not that not that she needs it, but I'll 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 I'll, 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 I'll but I'll actually give give it give a little shout out to uh you know to 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 declare here because you know i was always like you know well maybe we'll use like a little bit of like white flour and maybe we'll do this and like she was like no we're we're making this all you know fresh milled and then they can actually sub in the other stuff but we're gonna make these recipes work with only fresh milled flour and that's and i think that's what really made it sort of um, you know, the raise it a level. So yeah. that was one of the big uh, messages in the book is fresh milled. And whether you mill it yourself or have it freshly milled for you at a, a local mill, like the one that, that, that you source from. Um, and then, but also uh, then um, uh, using bolted flour. So you're, you're, you're sifting some, some of the, the, the chaff and the, and the bran out, but, but it's, it's kind of what we might call high extraction flour in, and, you know, I think that's the term that we often use, a flour that's not white flour, it's not quite whole wheat flour, but it's somewhere in between. And that seemed to be what, as I was reading all these recipes and, and imagining what the breads were going to taste like, it seemed like to me that was kind of one of the key, key techniques that you were promoting in this book is to switch over to something that, that's, if not whole wheat, then at least, uh, at least bolted and, and high extraction. Would that be an accurate assessment? Yeah. I think when we started writing the book, um, and I'm happy to say that things have generally changed a bit by now, but there weren't a ton of bread books out there um, kind of addressing um, um, fresh milk flour or regional sourcing. And it felt like it would be, and when folks did address it, it was more sort of as a like, oh, 20% in there, or, you know, just like little, little bits. Um, and while that was great, I felt like a, a next step would be to point out that you could really just kind of commit and just do, you could use the, the cool new flowers that you're sourcing regionally. Um, like you can just really depend on them. They're not just for show or just for kind of like a, a note. You could really depend on them as like functional flowers. Um, so that was kind of um, part of the point of really committing to just having the recipes purely be a blend of whole grains and bolted flour. Yeah, there's been such a sea change in the last few years in the emergence of these local mills that are that are you know being able to provide and uh, you know fresh flour to more and more restaurants, bakeries, uh, even home bakers. Um, that and I think that was definitely one of the changes we've seen in the four years since we've started doing the symposium. The you know we we were we've been tracking it and it's like it's it's a sector that just is getting bigger and bigger and and also I, I remember uh, Mark that you were if I'm if I'm not mistaken back then you were working very closely with Dr. Steve Jones out in, in Washington State uh, on this whole idea of sort of regionally specific strains of wheat is that still does that a, does that play a factor in the development of these breads as well I think I mean, he, wrote, he wrote a, he wrote something for the book as well. He did. And, you know, for us, you know, we, we figured out long ago that, you know, we really like to stay, stay, stay local, um, you know, and it's just like fresher flour. Um, you know, we know the miller, um, like, yeah. And, you know, why look for something far away when, you know, you have it right, right here and, and you, like, like in your backyard, um, you know, so that really, Sort of work uh, for us. We have uh, you know some 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 local variations here. Uh, uh, it's called one one so the the one's called Redeemer wheat. The other's called Warthog. And you know we just whatever whatever is like is like the, that's that, that that that's available. You know 
we'll use that. Yeah, you know, we get some 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 Dorum from 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 Arizona, uh-huh. um, but you know, mostly it's just the the localness. You know, it's also thinking about uh, the 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 economics of it. You know, you know, we buy local. Um, we make things here local. Folks who live here, you know, they buy local. They go to the farmers markets. They buy it. Then the then, you know, we order more from our, you know, local miller. It's it, it's just the cycle, um, you know. It, like it just makes everything sort of work locally. Um, it's you, you know, healthier for the the, the environment. You know, mm-hmm. healthier for uh, you know our little sort of you know, Philadelphia world here. Um, I know some questions are starting to come in, so I'm going to throw everyone to eyes. You keep and feel free, all of you watching, you know, write your questions on the Q and A, and I'll try to feed them to our our, our team here. Uh, and the first one, of course, is can you define more uh, mm-hmm. specifically what bolted flour means? What that term bolted means? I knew this was going to come up. I was going to ask you, Peter, actually, because you refer to the term high extraction more and we kind of use those interchangeably but Claire and I went back and forth on this because we're trying to appeal to home bakers who may not be familiar with these technical terms we we considered using the term sifted but then obviously that could just mean regular old you know commercial flour that that you put through a sifter so that wasn't clear anyway Claire if you want to explain like how we settled on bolted that would be great (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think it was one of our late edits too. We like did had to do a big control F on the whole manuscript and split everything <laughs> out. Yeah, it's yeah. Bolted. Um, so yeah, what we were thinking. So bolted flour or high extraction flour or often sifted flour can all refer to the same thing, which is when you take whole grain, whole wheat flour has all of the germ, all of the endosperm, and all of the bran incorporated in the flour and you remove some of the bigger particles and that generally is just going to be bigger bits of bran and so you're going to leave in small pieces of bran and like the germ which is kind of oily will get more integrated into the flour Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's not flour and it's not whole wheat flour so it's more processed than whole wheat but less processed than uh, Mm -hmm. typical commercial white flour one of, um, one of the, the, the viewers said the bolting originally referred to using bolts of cloth to sift out the brand and germ, but what equipment are you using to bolt your flowers? So, so, so we recommend just using whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. The uh, I, I mean, for the, for the recipes that I test, I tested all these recipes in my home kitchen and I used a, just to standardize it, I used a 40 mesh sifter that I bought from Breadtopia. Um, but uh, for the pasta book and the pizza book, I was just using a sifter that I got at Whole Foods, you know, like one of those typical mesh sifters. Uh, yeah. it, was a little, it was a little coarser than uh, the 40 mesh. So that Is was it the one where you squeeze the handle and it kind of could be- No, no, just a, a sieve, just a oh, regular oh, sieve. Okay. okay, yeah. And that's literally what all of the recipes were tested with, grain that was milled, and then put through that sifter once uh, to get out the bigger bran flakes, and that's it. That's bolted well, we, flour we, as, as we defined it. We should, so we should add though also that this, you know, that that sort of flour is not, you know, you know, shelf shelf stable, you know, because you know you have all the oils from you know the inside and, and oils, <laughs> minerals, uh, the, the vitamins, and you know that stuff, you know, like after so, 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 several weeks you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go rancid, you know? So like if you opened up, you know, some, 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 some whole wheat, some, some whole wheat flour from like the, the, the store, um, you don't know how old it is. It might be actually six months old. Like if you eat it, it's like, it, like, like, like a lot of it has this sort of, this, this rancid after, like the, this, this after taste, you know? But if you eat like, Fresh milled, fresh milled flour that's actually sifted. It's like, it, it's like super, super, super. So it's like really uh, nice, and it's um, you know has some 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 like uh, 
you know, some 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 some, some really nice um, uh, you know, sweetness. Sweet. Um, yeah, you know, so you know that's but that's also you know why we like local. That's actually why we you know like to have the relationship, you know, because they let us know, hey, we're milling it on this day, you know, you know, so we know how old it is, and um, you know, so that's also sort of um, you know that's that that. that, that that's important. Claire, are you still making yeah. the bread for the restaurant? No. So, uh, while still for Mark, um, I started a small farmer's market based bakery. And um, after a year of doing both working in the restaurant and having my own project, yeah. um, I was able to expand my project to require full time. So, I, wow. I, uh, Handed off the bakery to another skilled baker. I was, I was going to ask you that because you have a, this, it's Ursa Bakery, right? Uh -huh. And 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 do you sell that? Um, I know you started at, like at farm markets, but are you selling it beyond that now? Um, a little bit, but I mean, farmers markets are really kind of my core and it's what I like doing the most. So it's pretty much the plan is to stick with this. Um, I do a couple farmers markets a week. I'm part of a CSA, so I'm an add-on for a local CSA. And I have one, one friend who has a shop out just outside town who does a one wholesale order a week. Um, and he only sells the bread on that day. So where do you do yeah, the baking? Tiny, but where, like where is the bakery itself? Or where do you do the baking? Um, currently, I sublet space from a bigger bakery in my neighborhood in, in Germantown in Philly. Um, oh. But I'm building out another space in, um, in North Philly still. Well, <laughs> really? Oh, I didn't hear that. That's awesome. I didn't know yeah. that either. That's awesome. <laughs> I, wasn't, That's awesome. Yeah. I wasn't sure when I saw that you were doing, you know, the farm market thing, whether you were, whether you had like a little cottage bakery in your garage, like some of my friends have, where you, you know, actually bake right at home, but you have a, you have a, a, a dedicated space somewhere that you're, you know, have an operation out of. Yeah, for better or worse in Philly, your cottage industries aren't, aren't legal here, oh. but um, <laughs> fortunately I have good connections in the in the professional baking community. Yeah. So I've been able to rent space from two different operations over the years. And and uh, and the breads that you make to, to sell to the public, are these the ones similar to the ones in the book? Yeah, several of them are really, really close. I mean, obviously, you know, as you bake uh, your, your formulas and your techniques sort of um, are constantly evolving and constantly um, shifting. So, there, it's kind of a snapshot in time, um, the book, but yeah, more or less, a lot of them are very similar. So this is again, a question to all of you that uh, one of the, uh, Esther who, who asked the question about bolting, asked, do you lose some of the nutrients and fiber when bolting? She's a home baker. She wants mm -hmm. to know, you know, what do you lose when you bolt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you totally do lose some fiber, um, some minerals. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, less nutritionally dense than totally 100% whole grain, but it handles a little more easily than completely whole grain flour. And it's more nutritionally dense than white flour. So like I use entirely bolted flour for my baguettes and, and one other, well, basically just that one dough. Um, and I do have a diabetic customer who, who's come through and commented that, you know, he routinely checks his, in his blood sugar around meals and he says that compared to any, any other like white bread, my baguettes are like don't cause him an uh, insulin spike or a blood sugar spike the way that um, other breads would, which, you know, obviously that's just anecdotal, but it's it was cool to hear that like kind of specific um, feedback. And just to throw some numbers in there, um, I actually weighed the bread with the bolting method that I described earlier. I just weighed the, the flour to see what the extraction was and it was about 78%. So if a whole wheat flour is 100% of the nutrients, the bolted flour that we're calling for is, is got about 78% of those nutrients. Although you are, you are lifting out more of the brand because those are bigger when uh, you do the sifting. Yeah, and, and typically white flour or patent flour, whatever you know, the the that where it's completely sifted is usually seventy percent or a little bit below seventy percent extraction 
could be 65 percent. So you so you're somewhere in the middle. You're in that sort of, and I think that's part of the the uh, discovery process of the breads that you're you know presenting in the book is that that you're taking breads that have been many of them have been customarily made with totally sifted flour, like you know totally white flour, and moving the dial back towards whole wheat to find that sort of balance point between flavor and function. And, you know, and so it's a lot of people would have a hard time getting their mind around 100% whole wheat baguette, for instance, although I know some people are doing a good job at that, but you're looking for a baguette that will satisfy, you know, the baguette purist, but yet in a, in a different way than you might find at your local, even in a Parisian bakery. There yeah. were some recipes where I was so pleasantly surprised that you didn't need the functionality, like the 100% whole grain um, pot of choux performs perfectly and tastes so much better because it's 100% whole grain. Yeah, and that's something you, you don't get out of, you know, your old uh, uh, culinary school textbook on making it with 100% whole wheat flour. Uh, so, and, and you've got a baguette. I know, I uh, see so you have a Polish style baguette in the book that, uh, you know what it reminded me of a little bit is, is the breads is that when we had Apollonia Poilan on uh, in the symposium way back at the beginning, and really the Poilan bakery has been built on, the, on this classic country loaf that they make that also is a, a bolted flour. And, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, that, that yours are kind of in that same mode. You're taking, you're, you're taking that, another step you're saying if it works for that bread why can't it work for this loaf and for that loaf and and of course in your books not only those kinds of bread you've got pastries in here you've got you've got uh, a puff pastry you've got cream puff you've got uh, uh desserts and pastries so the, so but is that mostly is that sort of like this in a sense the secret weapon of this book is that most of the flour that you use is either whole 100 percent whole grain or bolted all of it every yeah. recipe that that's what's yeah. new yeah. just getting back to your initial initial question what's new here and Claire, again, deserves the, uh, the credit for championing that because she just kept saying, you know, like, you know, there's a million baguette recipes out there. What's going to make this book different? Uh, and it is the bolted flour throughout. There's only one recipe where we don't call for that. <laughs> oh, that yeah, Which that's the, the last one. The panettone? The panettone, yeah. Which is, I call that the bonus recipe. That's like, you know. Yeah, and, and maybe yeah. one day we'll, we'll give it a shot, but... But that, 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 that's, that, that's hard enough on its own with like that's a tricky thing flour. and everybody would love yeah. to be able to make a great panettone and this and your book gives the the the, the your famous you know vetri it's panettone. pretty right on i mean and you know when you asked earlier maybe you didn't i don't even remember when when you said what were some of the the the, the hard falls with like the book like we re rewrote that chapter 15 times. Really? You know, yeah, you yeah. should look, look at my Instagram if you want to see some of the failures. Oh my God. Panettone yeah. where, where it rose about maybe a half an inch, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure uh, yeah, that's challenging. So I, I can't even imagine doing that with bolted yeah. flour, let alone 100% whole grain. Yeah. Got lots of stories about that one too. Well, maybe if, in the after part. had another five hours. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Let me see if there's any some more questions coming through. Uh, and by the way, for, for those of you who are watching, uh, uh, Gene uh, Savage put up a, uh, a link to a mesh sifter, a 40 mesh sifter uh, through, from Breadtopia. You mentioned Breadtopia, a great supplier of tools. So there's a link to their, to their uh, uh, commerce site that you can get a, a sifter for those of you who want to uh, pick one up. Um, then uh, let's see, can you use leftover sifted? Oh, uh, Esther asks, can you use the leftover sifted brand for other things? Where, where, where to go uh, for other things rather than just throwing it away? Do you now you do you mill your own flour, Claire, or do you get it milled locally and then just buy the flour from the mill? So I mill all of my own whole grains, um, but I don't have um, the facility. To, I don't have a bolter, um, and especially not in the volume that I'm going through. Um, so actually, I wanted to say going back to the question about the the bolting terminology of it being sifted through through um, fabric, the mill that I buy my bolted flour from um, still uses the old, it's like a cylinder wrapped in like a loose silk and mm. they still use that to, um, to bolt their flour. So my, um, my bolted flour is totally done in the old style. 
Um, so, so yeah, it does happen to the to the to the siftings to the bran and 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 the the minerals that have been sifted out. Uh, is there is there a supply? Do people get their hands on that? Um. So yeah, you can you can like request to buy it from the mill. Um, they sell the majority of it to I believe a chicken farm or a pig yeah. farm. Um, they also when they have excess excess, they would they sold some to a mushroom farm. And they also have a pelletizer, so they would pelletize it and burn it. Um, that was when it was like real, when they really had too much to, um, wow. to sell yeah. off. So you can make, make fuel out of it. Um, yeah. yeah, to eat the, yeah. the mill itself. Yeah. Um, you, can make, you, can, you can make things with it also. I mean, you can make, you can like uh, ferment it and, uh, you know, most of it. And I think we actually have a, we have a section in the in book. There. Yeah, 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 but okay. but honestly, I mean, we had so so much of it that um, we used to have our uh, the, the, the 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 mushroom farmer. You know, he used to stop over. He used to bring us mushrooms, and you know, we used to give him, you know, lots of that stuff. So um, that's that's interesting. That, that would make that that sounds like I yeah. could use for it. I used uh, yeah. to dusting uh, pizza peels. Yeah, yeah, also, could be, yeah. yeah, but also dusting loaves. It would be, be yeah. a great that sort of. To, dust topping. Yeah. Uh, one of our writers even like, suggested that putting it on on top of the bridge. Uh, yeah. I think there's also something like like in there that uh, you can make you, you can you can you can make uh, um, some some soap with it also. Soap. Yeah, yeah. There's a little roundup of some interesting things that uh, oh, nice. chefs have done with it. Um, wasn't yeah. Shola making uh, something with it also yeah uh, Joel's making something um yeah so there's some interesting um, ideas in there you know, the guy it's being a great body scrub yeah it makes sense um uh, uh someone says though they, they they've added it to muffin batter brand muffin batter which sure. makes perfect sense so so basically and of course last week or a couple weeks ago we had a whole presentation on upcycling you know and 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 essentially repurposing for instance uh, spent grain from breweries and things like that so sure so everybody's hyper sensitive right now and conscious of no, nothing should go to waste. And of course it doesn't, of it's, and even, if it's, even if you're using it as compost or, or as a, a bed for mushrooms, it's still serving a purpose. Sure. So, all right, let me see what else is coming in. Uh, uh, yeah, someone says it's also good for compost if nothing else. Um, so, uh, so let's go, I wanna go back and even though it's not what the, the heart of the book is and about the panettone and like I call it like the bonus recipe, and and people are fascinated with panettone. Without, you know, I mean, we should tell people if, if you want to make panettone like they get the book. But are there a few things that for folks who are already out there working on their panettones that a few uh, takeaways that you could share with us? Because uh, I'll find the the photos and show you. In a second. You know, find a good therapist. It, good therapist it's a love hate <laughs> relationship. You you said something once. What was it, Claire? Like. I don't remember what you said exactly. The boyfriend, it's like, a, I don't remember the exact quote, but it was really funny. It's like- I was so was, strung out. Yeah, I think it was, it was something about being in an abusive relationship. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, well, but this is the result if you hang in there <laughs> and work it through. You know, this is a, yeah. this is a, just a gorgeous crumb structure. And, and uh, this is, it, it has a, a golden texture, a golden hue to it, but you're not using the bolted flour in this. So is that no. the eggs? That, yeah. That's that's just the eggs and the 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 mix and uh you know it was just, I mean you know we you know sort of made that over it and over and after we actually handed it in you know we like made it again and uh, finally I think we were able to, you know to nail like you know like 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 a certain amount of minutes and you know it's but and and like in a certain look and everything but you know but but it's always like when you think you nailed it then like something else happens and you yeah know, so it's just very it's very complicated you have to hang the most upside down i had a lot of failures with that and the uh it seemed to be the fermentation temperature was critical for for that bread to be successful the dough just was very sensitive to to the temperature. Um, so I, I ended up using a proofing box for that because I tried just using those little spots in my house where I knew the temperature was a certain, it was pretty consistent, but um, it didn't work. So uh, yeah. 
I used the proofing box, which um, which worked out really well. They're pretty inexpensive and was uh, big enough to hold the dough, so that worked. Uh, Mark Marco Devito asked, "Would you consider teaching a Panettone class, maybe a Zoom class on how to make it? Have you ever done, have you done that?" You know, so we thought about that last last year, and I just I didn't like know how to make it how to make it work, you know, because it's like such a long, it's just such a, like literally you mix for 30 minutes and then you do nothing for six hours and then you mix for another 30 minutes and then you're done. I mean, so it's, you know, I didn't have to have all these swap outs. To, um, yeah. It, like it, like it, unless it was like a, three day sort of thing where like you hop on for 30 minutes every like six hours. Um, and who knows? I mean, I mean, it might be, might, might be, might, might be worth it, but if it's just, I, I just think it'd be too hard. Well, next year, our plan for the symposium is to go live again, face to face uh, and do it in, in, in workshop form in, in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. So, Maybe we're still working on the details of that. So I don't know what the program's going to look like in the end, but maybe that would be a place if you wanted to come up and, uh, uh, you know, kind of lead a workshop that we could, that could span a couple of days. Yeah, uh, yeah. That would be maybe a cool place to do it. Well, I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Get back to me. We'll, we'll see where the world is then. Uh, Claire, do you make, do you ever make the panettones, uh, you know, like at holiday time for, from the bakery for the public? No, no, I have a restraining order out on Panatone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's not right. That was the, the abusive relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, do you make it at the restaurant, Mark, or is it just you do? Yeah. yeah, you do it. We do it for holidays. You know, we we did it last year when we weren't open, just to like make a little money. Um, uh, but other than that, you know, we just limit it to like you know six weeks a year. Um, you know, otherwise I'll never have anybody work here again. So right. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that when you get that bread right, it is the best thing ever. I mean, because it's so incredibly enriched, it's got the inclusions in it. The, we have a chocolate and orange and it's just so flavorful and the texture is so light. It is the best thing toasted. It, I mean, I yeah. just can't even describe how French toast. It is. It's really great. Uh, and the satisfaction after going through the whole process, of, you know, it's just, uh, it's a really amazing bread. Cool. Well, I did want to touch on that, but I don't, I don't want to uh, really take away more from the, 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 the heart and soul of the book is really about making breads and other products and other baked goods using, again, with an emphasis on whole grain. And uh, somebody's asking again, uh, you had mentioned briefly, I think in the very beginning, the mill, one of the mills you work with locally. Um, and of course, I, I would think that one of the messages is that if you're not living in the Philadelphia area, you need to find mills close to you, like the ones that you're working. What's what's the mill you work with? Uh, my my best friend mill is um, Castle Valley Mill. They're about um, 40 minutes away from where we are in Philadelphia. Castle Valley, uh huh. Okay, mm -hmm. that that that's one one somebody asked about that, but. Uh, um, and we have a whole list in the back of the book of uh, regional sources for for whole grains and for flowers, fresh milled flowers. So there's some, there are quite a few there everywhere, yeah. all around the country. Yeah, um, and it was really hard to keep that list updated. I'm sure things have progressed even further by so much since we put that out. But exactly, yeah, we tried because to, we tried that's to the same thing I, thing I ran into when I did a book years ago was by the time the book actually came out, because it takes a year to get the book out, you know, the, yeah. it's almost obsolete or out of date. But um, I see that you've got like, uh, again, your source, whole, a whole list of sources and places. And that can be now a starter, starter list for all of you. I know that there's constantly updates of these happening. Um, yeah. And you have it by region, which is I think also important. Um, and some of these, the ones that are listed here are ones that many of you who are watching probably already are familiar with. Um, and then and a very nice bibliography of, uh, uh, books and articles that you refer people to for uh, uh, you know for reference um, so yeah especially the articles um, so uh, other products I know you, you have a brioche in the book and again in people's minds brioche is always a white flour 
bread kind of, you know, light and, and, and golden. Um, you make it yours with a combination, I think, of whole wheat and bolt and flour, right? What's yeah, um, you know, we just needed something at that tree. This was kind of like an early um, part of the transition. I guess I should say like kind of going way back. My, my charge when I came into Vetri was sort of like, I came into this wonderful, super successful, super popular, well-loved restaurant and was like told to like, you know, switch one of the core ingredients to something totally different. Um, and, you know, I was really scared of becoming like the bad guy, like the official, like ruin, ruin the party kind of, um, uh, part of the restaurant is still working. Um, yeah, so one of the first things I, I, I switched out was just a traditional brioche to something with some whole grain in it. And that was kind of when we were also in a, in a moment really trying to push whole grain specifically onto the menu, which we like calmed down about as time went on, but we were really excited. Um, so yeah, I just decided that um, I would start there. I figured you know, if nothing else, the brioche is still going to have plenty of butter and plenty of sugar in it. And so I would be able to like bribe people into accepting it in that way. And it worked. I mean, it was great. It was so good. It was like, it just stays light, stays soft, still like dissolves in your mouth. And then we would put it with like foie gras. So it was like, it was just, yeah, yeah it turned, I was. Are there things that, into things that you have to do with that, that if you were making it in a the more traditional, you know, white flour version, the, uh, other things that you have to do to make it work in this whole grain version. More eggs, for instance, you have to use a higher percentage of eggs or butter to me or anything like that. I don't think your butter content is out of, it's somewhere around 50%-ish, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's not a crazy high percentage, um, but it's also, I think that was also about like kind of the structure for the purpose that we were using it for, honestly. Like I don't do a ton of brioche because it's just not something in my line that I that like I need it very frequently. So I think you could still do an extremely enriched brioche. I just haven't really messed around with it personally. Yeah. Um, but other but than that, I mean, you don't have to I'll do just say, When I do whole grain breads, I tend to mix them a little tiny bit less than than regular. I was asking because I remember when Mark, when you made that pasta for us at Johnson and Wales, uh, and there's this whole wheat flour that you know had just been, I guess I'm not sure if it was recently milled, but somehow you had the, the this great flour, and then you started doing the yolks, and you were like you were like you know uh, sifting out yolks and yolks and yolks, and all of a sudden I went, oh my god, he's that, no wonder this pasta so late is a ton of yeah. egg yolks in here, and and uh, and it paid off. There was a payoff there, so I'm wondering if you had to do the same thing when yeah. you, you do that with whole grain breads. I think everything you know that 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 happened here. I mean, I mean, from five six years ago to now is you know just like 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 you actually mentioned, you know, function versus 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 flavor. You know, we would, you know, we had a lot of things where you know we just that that ne 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 that never worked, and um, we had to figure it out. Um, and you know, you, you can see like I've. Like I've watched like these new, these new uh, facilities that are like making you know new new noodles with like you know whole wheat, um, and I look on their 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 their, in, their Instagrams and I like look at the noodle and they're like you know you know one week old and I just look at the noodle and I'm like that's not gonna work and I just know it's not gonna work and then over the 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 months you watch the noodle sort of the 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 the, the, uh, the the evolution of it, and after like four or five months, like oh, that looks a little like it actually will work now. It's just you know, so you have to figure things out, and you know, we went through a lot of I think screw up with 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 all the books, with all with you know with, whether it's the noodle or you know, you know whether it's uh, focaccia or or the 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 loaves of bread. I mean, you know, we went through tons of like errors and like su su successes, um, you know, and, and then it's that, you know, you know, do you want more, more holes, more like huge holes of like 
ferment, per, fermentation or do you want like less holes but you but more more flavor and and then it's and, it, and it's not always you know just the whole wheat versus the white the white flour you, you we 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 eventually learn you know you know how to make really nice sourdough with nice holes using whole wheat flour you know but but that that wasn't like the first loaf it was like a little while later this was one of the things that i was trying to tease out of claire like how do because she would just make the bread and it would come out amazing and i'm like well how do i explain what you did you know well you know i just felt it if it felt right then it was good to go in the oven if it didn't then it needed longer fermentation yeah. or whatever and well you know what did you do yeah. and there were a few things that came up um but I think this is the real trick with working with bolted flowers, knowing what you can do if you're if the dough feels sticky and weak, because that's that's often the way it'll feel if you're used to baking with um, like a, a regular commercial bread flour. So some of the things mm -hmm. were like a longer auto lease mm -hmm. uh, or using more pre ferments and counterintuitively mixing less. Um, so I don't know, Claire, if you want to go into more detail on that, but there were some techniques, I think, woven throughout the recipes that I tried to explain up front uh, were being used that, that might help people understand how to handle this kind of dough a little differently. Yeah, and I appreciate yeah. you sharing, being willing to share and articulate, you know, those, those tips and tricks. Yeah, we definitely needed David for a thousand reasons, but one of them just to be like a normal human being who wasn't like broken kitchen brain. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, and this was also really helpful. So when we were doing most of the writing of the book, most of the development, um, you know, I had been with at the restaurant for a few years. So I was like really um, like kind of saturated in knowledge about working with fresh mold flour and bold flour and whole grain flour. Um, like that had become enough my world um, that I'd lost a little bit of perspective on like what normal baking felt like. Um, and then conveniently right towards the end, I filled in for some friends at a, at a more traditional bakery. And, um, and David had been asking me all these questions, like how is it a little different? And like, you know, like what's different about this? And I'd kind of been, I've kind of been pushing this argument really hard, like nothing, it's totally the same. And then fortunately, you know, through the side-by-side -side comparison, going back to like a white flour oriented bakery, I was able to see like, oh no, it really is like, yeah, fresh milk flour is just as Dave said, is like it generally it's, it's probably gonna feel a little stickier. So you're gonna feel like your dough hasn't developed enough strength mm -hmm. or it's going to ferment a little faster or like a lot faster. And so you're gonna think that you're not giving it enough time, um, like especially at room temperature, but, um, it's really just going to take off if it's like a healthy culture. Um, so yeah, all these sorts of things, it's um, fast fermentation, perhaps a bit of a weaker, stickier dough, especially at first build it like building strength through folds. Um, yeah. They're just, they're just like kind of these core little things that can, can be repeated um, to can be applied to a lot of recipes. It's interesting. Uh when we were talking about these little, these little tricks and tips, uh, things have changed. The, the, and the baking community has become extremely generous about sharing the discoveries that everybody's making. I remember when I was first teaching in a culinary school in, in San Francisco, there was a very famous pastry chef there who uh, written maybe the best-selling book on how to do, you know, French style pastries and everything. And, and when he would teach his students how to make something, uh, he would get to sort of a critical point in the in the in the demo, and just as he was about to do it, he would turn his back and do it so nobody could see what he actually did, and uh, and the students would go crazy and they just turn around and they can't see it, you know. And that was kind of like his way of torturing the students was, yeah. you know, you're not ready for this technique yet, but um, times but have it, definitely changed. You know, I mean, those some of you know who I'm talking about, I think out there. But it's um, but it, but it's not even that. Also, like you could actually like know it. Like I mean, you know, when when we finally hired like someone else to 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 to, to work up there with 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 
with her. Um, you know, you, you know, she would like she would like work with them and like show them. And then oh, lo yeah. and behold, you know, when when you were off, Claire, I mean, you know the stories like the bread was like was like That's matzah. It. And we're, right. we're like, Claire, she screwed the bread up. You know, what did she do wrong? And and there's all and there's always like one thing or this other thing and, and you know we have to figure out for like months you know why it's not working and and you know she knew all the techniques um or, or you, you know he or she whoever was 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 making it then um you know so even if you know and you know you've like read everything and you understand everything you know there's like still a like learn lear learning learning curve where you know it's the the rapid the the repetition like and yeah. you have to keep doing it because awesome. and then just one day you're going to be like you're going to like feel the loaf like like you said like yeah. you 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 like you know you know how do you say to someone look feel it it's right but but how like explain that in words like i can't it just feels right you know i remember this moment late in the writing when claire was like Look, we have to tell people that they have to stop reading this book and go into the kitchen <laughs> and handle some dough. There's just no other way. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, really appreciate all this. And uh, before we break, we're going to break for the after party in a second. Um, but I, I can't, I can't resist. I, I said there was a bonus recipe, the uh, you know, the uh, panettone. But there's actually another bonus recipe that Mark that uh, Mark threw in his. Uh, because you know you're famous for your pastas. I mean, you're legendary for your pasta. So you you had to have a pasta recipe in there, and I was amazed. Yeah. Uh, it's the it's the spaghetti aglioleo, which you know I grew up with in Philadelphia. Yeah. That was, whenever I, there was a certain restaurant we used to go to in Philly, that always that was like the you know on the menu, and I and it was so simple, but it was yet so good. And I was surprised that it's never been you know you've never published this, but you said you you had. You had this recipe and you had to find a place to put it. So you had, I guess you must have had an extra page or two that they gave you to well, so you put that recipe in there. And I mean, it was like, like, it was actually less about that. It was, it was like more about, I, I just started thinking about it. Like, you know, there isn't any like noodles in, in this book and I've never written anything. You know, that, and the, 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 so I actually asked him, I was like, Hey, what do you think about like sticking? And, and I had, never stuck that in in any of the uh, the, uh, the 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 other the other ones and i was like yeah oh man i i make aliolio always and i've never like written about it so you know we started thinking about it and like you know and you know, we just sort of thought about it as like this this side 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 b for like some yeah you know some like some like some, some like wreck some some like 45 record that right, nobody right. nobody yeah. watching this knows about anymore anyway but right, uh, right, right. um <laughs> you know and and it actually worked and uh you know the house liked it so uh we, right. we went ahead with it the, the publishing house liked it we obviously had to ask them and they thought i was a little nuts but they 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 went ahead with it so yeah there's a decent oh. amount of back and forth with them being like i'm sorry what <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. This is a bread book. What is this thing here? Well, what? like, well, you serve it with bread, and you know that will encourage people to use yeah. the breads in the book. But yeah, it wasn't. In, it wasn't that we had a blank page. Mark wanted to get that in there. So. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did um, because it kind of reminds us of some of the things that we just that we love that that are the, the comfort foods that we just love. Is there anything about this about the way you make it that's different than the way? you know, someone's grandmother would have made it or as you uh, Yeah, I mean, like, like, I think there's some, uh, the, the, the anchovy in there, which is, I don't think in a lot of other, and, and you know, it, it's not like, a, you know, an old, an old school recipe. And yeah. I also uh, fry the, um, the parsley. Oh. You know, so that's kind of a, a different thing also. Um, Interesting. Oh, there. Okay. I, I, I should have. Yeah. Like, like, it, like I add that when the oil's hot, but then I, then I add the, the, the starchy water. Awesome. So, well, see, there um, it is. So that's, yeah. So there's, there's, there's definitely a bonus. To some simple bonus doesn't mean easy. You know. What's that? Sim, sim, simple, 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 simple doesn't mean easy. Doesn't mean easy. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, well, I don't know if if it. That restaurant was already closed by the time that 
because you're a few years younger than me, but we used to go to Pagano's in West Philly uh, for pizza and pasta when I was a kid and, and roasted chicken. They had roasted chicken that they were famous for, but they but they had this aglioli on the, on the menu. And that's where I first even learned about the, the concept of it, you know, so mm. it's one of those uh, must have uh, sure. dishes that did, you know, the comfort food. I think Cacio Pepe is now the sort of the, the, the oh, darling yeah. pasta of the moment, that, but that, that's a sexy pasta right now. Yeah. We, yeah. 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 I could do a whole like, like, an Instagram page of like only that, and, it, and, yeah. I, and I get a million followers. You know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, we're going to continue this conversation in the after party for as long as you guys can can join us. So, for those of you who are able to come over to the uh, to the VIP lounge, you can just uh, navigate over. We all have to log out of this oh, webinar and log back in on the link that you have for going to the um, to the after party. And and so we'll take a couple minute break here uh, while we all do that, and we'll. We'll rejoin those of you who can join us in the after party. And uh, again, uh, Claire Kopnick Williams, David Joachim, and Mark Vetri, thank you so much for doing the book and for being here to tell us all about it. And uh, your best of success. Uh, and hopefully, uh, the, now maybe a few more people will have copies of it out there and start making some of these breads. Again, and those of you who are uh, not going to join us in the after party, we'll see you uh, either Wednesday when we talk about uh, the future technologies in baking or next week when we continue on with the bread symposium. See you then. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you to our team behind the scenes. Our event, technical and production partners, Ganoid Communications, including our producer, Gurmit Singh, and his team, Jida Gajaria, Gagandeep Singh, and Jaydev Kashari. Thanks also to Ted Nelson and Lael Fretzel of our creative and marketing team at Gumbo Marketing, and the many folks at Johnson & Wales University who supported me throughout this event. My executive assistant, Sarah Standifer, communications director, Melinda Law, Chancellor Mim Rooney, Charlotte Campus President Cheryl Richards, and our executive team leaders, deans and faculty, Maureen Dumas, Michael Schrader, Michelle Nicholas, Mark Norman, Brent Steyerwalt, Laurie Heinbach, Jerry Lanuza, Amy Felder, Harry Paymiller, Richard Miskovich, and many, many others. Thank you all. <laughs>